Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we saw that if you want to take the Laplace transform of the integral of a function that is equal to 1 over s times the Laplace transform of the function itself. A really easy example of that is taking the Laplace transform of the integral of the sine of omega t. Now we know that the Laplace transform of simply the sine of omega t alone will be equal to omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. So since this is the integral of sine of omega t, we simply have to multiply it times 1 over s. And that's it. It's actually pretty easy. Consequently, if we go backwards, the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s times the Laplace transform of the function is the same as saying the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s times the function in the frequency domain, this is f of s, which is equal to the integral of the function. Hmm, what does that really mean? Well, if we take, for example, 1 over s times s divided by s squared plus omega squared. Now, this portion right here, if we take the inverse transform of this, like we show right here, the inverse transform of this portion right here, well, we would get the cosine of omega t because the inverse Laplace transform of this portion alone is simply the integral, is simply the cosine of omega t. But since it's multiplied times 1 over s, then when we take the inverse Laplace transform, we simply then say that this is equal to the integral of this portion right here because of the 1 over s there. In other words, this, if we take the Laplace transform of that, or I should say the inverse Laplace transform, of the quantity 1 over s times s over s squared plus omega squared. Notice what we have here is we have this right here. We have 1 over s times this portion, the function in the frequency domain, and if we take the inverse Laplace transform of that, we should get the cosine of omega t. But because we have the 1 over s in front of it, it's actually the integral of the cosine of omega t. This is equal to the integral from 0 to t of the function of t, which in this case is the cosine of omega. And we're going to use a dummy variable, tau, instead of t, still it means time, times d tau, like this. And so notice the only difference is, if we didn't have the 1 over s, and we took the inverse Laplace transform, we would simply get the cosine of omega t. However, since we have a 1 over s in there, it is equal to the integral from 0 to t of the function times dt. It's as simple as that. Now to show you how that really works, let's simplify this. Actually, you can see here that we can cancel out this s and this s, so this can also be written as the inverse Laplace transform of, and that would then be 1 over s squared plus omega squared. And then if we want to put an omega there, we could put an omega up there, and of course, times 1 over omega. We do that because now we can realize that 1 over omega is simply a constant that can come outside, and taking the inverse Laplace transform of this will give us the sine of omega t. So this is equal to 1 over omega times the sine of omega t. Now, that should be exactly the same as what we have over here. Now let's find out if that's indeed the case. Let's go ahead and take the integral of that. Of course, since we have the cosine of omega tau, we need an omega d tau, we need the proper differential. So this can be written as 1 over omega times the integral from 0 to t of the cosine of omega tau times omega d tau. This here is the proper differential of this integral right here. And of course, since we have to multiply this times omega, we also have to divide by omega. Now we can go ahead and take the integral of that, and the integral of the cosine of omega t is the negative sine. I believe that's correct, because the derivative sine is the cosine. No, no, the, the integral of the cosine is the positive sine. Hmm, I always have to think about backwards. The derivative sine is the cosine, so therefore the integral of the cosine is the sine. So, this is equal to 1 over omega times the sine of omega t, evaluate it from 0 to t. Now let's plug in the upper limit and the lower limit and see what we get. 
And of course, this should really be tau, the dummy variable, not t, but tau. The limits are from 0 to t. And then that means that this is equal to 1 over omega times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get the sine of omega t. And we plug in the lower limit, we get the sine of 0. Of course, the sine of 0 is 0. Simply, this becomes 1 over omega times the sine of omega t, which is exactly the same what we got over here. This simply shows you again, it proves, well, not really proves, but at least it gives you good indication that when we take the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s times the function in s, the function in the frequency domain, we can simply take this, transform it, and then make it an integral because it's 1 over s in front. Notice when we calculate this out, we get 1 over omega times the sine of omega t. Or we could have simply simplified this as much as possible, then multiply and divide by omega so that this part looks like the frequency domain of the sine of omega t. So we do the transfer right here, and then we have the 1 over omega, and you can see we get the exact same result. And that's how that works.